Hello, and welcome to Tub Talk. My name is Donnell Rourke, and I'm here to tell it to you completely 100% straight. See, a lot of times people come and they like to stroke your ego and tell you what it is you want to hear, but not what you need to hear. Well, I'm here to tell you what you need to hear. I'm here to tell you what you need to hear so that you can be the best that you can be. I'm going to take this talk to fitness because that's what I know. I know what needs to be done for you to get in shape and to stay healthy. Now, I'm not talking about competition, bodybuilding type shape because that's not, that's for a select few. That's for some of those that are just, they're very determined and hardworking. I want to talk to those who are everyday individuals who want the best for themselves. See, these individuals, what they want is to live a healthier life so they can run around with their kids, grandchildren, so that they can live and be able to enjoy the life they have. Well, the problem that most of you have is that you say you want to get in this shape. You say you want to get healthier or that you're too fat and you want to get thin or you want to have a body that looks like this or looks like that. I hear that all the time. But what are you doing? Are you making that commitment to get up and move, to change your eating habits? Or are you sitting on the couch, eating a bag of chips, watching TV three, four hours, and then use the excuse that you have no time to work out? Or it's too hard to fit it in your schedule? Get up during commercials instead of fast forward and, you know, and stuffing your face, going to the refrigerator and getting more food. Get down on the floor and do some sit-ups. Do some push-ups, jumping jacks, anything, but get up, move. And I guarantee once you start doing a little, you'll start doing a little more. And when you start seeing those changes, it motivates you to do even more. See, in my THB dance fitness class, I don't halfway do it. I go in there and I full out give my 110% every single time. Now, I have taught my class through many different things. I've had three heart procedures, and uh, I used to joke with my class, I would bring a bottle of herbs, and I would tell them, hey, if I pass out, give me a, a, a whole big uh, spoonful of this, because I was there to teach my class and do it 100, 110%. No, nothing holding me back. I had uh, back problems. I would go in with a back brace on and I would do the best I could do. They knew the routines. I had taught them well. And so that they could continue doing what I taught them, even though I might not be able to teach them at that very point the exact way to do it. But I've showed them from the beginning the correct way to do the exercises. Now, um, right now, I'm fighting a pretty uh, bad shoulder injury. And so I joke around about my little bird arm because my right arm cannot raise up to the side. Uh, so I have to demonstrate everything with my left arm. But again, I taught them from the beginning how to do the arms correctly. So if I see them slacking off, uh-uh. I remind them, just because my arm won't do it doesn't mean that you are allowed to not do it. See, I expect my students to give 110%. Not because it's from, it's not for me, because I know it's the best for them. And when they see results in their body, and they're having fun doing it. I'm not one of these drill sergeants that yell in your face and, no, I'm there. They love it because I'm there to teach them how to be sexy. Honestly, my class is about uh, having fun, getting fit, and learning how to do it all while being sexy. Not slutty. 
there's a difference. Being sexy is classy. Being slutty is trashy. We are not trashy. We're anything but. We go in there and we have a good time. It doesn't matter if someone comes to me and says that my knee is bothering me or I have a problem like this. I show them modifications on how to do things. I show them how they can get the most out of working out and get the results they're looking for without hurting themselves. See, I apply the same principles that successful business owners apply in their life. They teach from the very beginning the correct way to run their business. They go in with expectations. When they hire people, they don't go, oh, just come in and do your best. No. They have a business plan and they expect their owners and managers and everyone that walks through their door to work with them to follow that business plan. If you don't, the plan fails. So when you have a business and it's not succeeding the way that you think it should or the dollars are not coming in like you want, you might want to rethink your business plan. See, when I create a dance routine, I first hear a song and it's got to get, you know, I got to feel it. And when I feel it, I just start thinking. I'm driving around in the car or I hear the song and I can see the moves in my head. And once I get the routine down in my head, then I turn it on and I start moving and see if it actually works. And you know what? Sometimes they don't fit. What goes on in my head doesn't necessarily fit completely with the music. Well, that's the same in business. You might think that this is what you want or what you want to do with the business. And when you actually try to apply it, it doesn't work. It's okay. It's okay to rethink the plan. You didn't fail. You only fail when you stop trying. So I'm here to tell you right now that as long as you keep trying and don't expect someone else to do it for you. Gosh, that makes me so upset when someone wants to blame someone else for them not succeeding. It's only you. Even if someone else was involved in the reason why you didn't succeed, let's say you had a business partner and things didn't work out, you have to think about what you did, what you allowed to be done. See, it's not all their fault and don't go around blaming others because all that's going to do is have you fail again. I promise you. But when you take responsibility, see what you did wrong and you fix it. Because one, you noticed it. You say, hey, this didn't work out the way I wanted. I'm going to change. And when you do that, you're going to see progress. You might even start seeing those dollar bills coming in. One of the biggest problems that we have in business is we like to go around and wish all day long that something's going to happen. Oh, we go around and tell people, oh, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to do this and I'm going to make this much money and this is what I want to do with my business and oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. And you're just all talk. Again, goes right back to that person sitting on that couch eating those potato chips. All talk. It's until you actually get up and do the work. Find people who are succeeding, whether it's in fitness or whether it's in business. Surround yourself with those who are like-minded. When you do that, you will start to hear what they're doing and go, huh, how can that be applied to my life or my business? Is it something that would help me? You ask yourself these key questions. When you ask yourself these key questions, you notice changes going on. You notice these changes going on, not only in yourself, but in those around you. Because when you are surrounded by successful, happy people, see there are some people that are successful, but they're so wound up and uptight and you just, you can't 
feel the negative energy. It's like going and working with a trainer who all they do is yell, yell, yell in your face. You can never do anything right. They don't explain to you why things are going wrong. They just tell you how wrong you're doing. No. You learn the right way. You find people who, when you go around, you want to be around them. You want, because they're happy. They're peaceful. Yes, they're successful. And so they have to do the things they need to do to succeed. But they're not stressed out. When you're all stressed out about something, you're not going to succeed, whether it's in fitness, whether it's in business, or whether it's in a relationship. You have to just have peace. A lot of times when I have uh, students who are not losing the weight, and they're eating right, and they're coming to class, and they're just they're getting, they're starting to get frustrated, I can ask a, just one simple question. What are you stressed about? And they go, well, this is going on in my life and this is going on. And, you know, this person did that and I'm so angry. And I can tell them right there that until they release that anger, until they move forward in a positive way, they're going to hold on to that fat. Okay, I could go into all this psychological, physical mumbo jumbo that most of us really don't care about. But believe it or not, our bodies want to protect us. And if we're all stressed out, one way it does it is by holding on to fat. Crazy, I know. But it does it. It protects us by keeping this fat because back in the old days when we didn't have a grocery store, we had to go out and kill the stuff. If you were all stressed out about something and you were just consumed with it and you weren't doing the work, you'd starve. And so your body goes, hey, they might starve. Well, it, it hasn't got the message that we have a grocery store that we just run to and get whatever we want or some fast food place. So it holds on to the fat, even though we're consuming and taking in enough calories to maintain our body and make it work properly, it holds on to it. So release the anger. Get some forgiveness in your life. Get some peace and happiness and watch the fat leave. Now, am I saying you can still sit on that couch and eat those potato chips and not move and watch the fat leave if you're happy? No. Okay, you have to move. That's in business. That's in fitness. You have to move. Well, that's all for Tub Talk today. I hope you're getting ready to move at least a little bit and I watch my videos on uh, my THB dance videos to get you motivated and move a little more and I promise when my shoulder gets better I'll put some more out. Peace and love, Donnell.